I know. I know that the dots will connect and the stars will align. I say these words like a mantra every day. I am a math teacher, a school director, and a founder of this school. I am also a mother of two teenage boys. I teach kids every day. But I think we all teach. Every time we say or do something, then other people hear us or see us, we teach. And I also think we all have kids. Yes, those of you who are not yet parents, think of your own inner child. And that's why I want to talk to you today about teaching kids and helping them find what they want, helping them find their way to achieve it. You know, my kids are great. Friendly, responsible, polite, and generally happy. But their grades in school are not always great. And I'm not always. But sometimes I am worried that these bad grades will hinder their future success. That these bad grades will close doors. You know, I see our kids' future as a picture, but not yet as this picture, more like this one. And when I think how to teach our kids to draw beautiful pictures of their future, I'm thinking of this easy way to teach them to draw. Maybe you know it. It's a game. It's called Connect the Dots. Anyone? Well, this is how it works. We can put the dots on the paper and let the kids draw the lines from one dot to another. The picture will magically appear. And you know, teaching kids is not always that simple. Actually, for my kids, teaching them has been very, very hard. Both my boys always struggled with reading and writing. Both have dyslexia. When my older son, Ron, was in first grade, he could easily do math in his head. But when it came to reading and writing, he could not do nothing at all. In third grade, when Ron was asked to write a paragraph about himself and what he likes, he wrote only this. This. It took him 10 minutes, five chocolate pieces, and one offering of, what did she give him? Oh, a soda. Can of soda. I forbade it, but that was something that made him write. So, you get it, right? Ron likes Minecraft. We had to take Ron out of school to prevent him from being constantly reminded that he is slower than his peers. Five hours a day, reading words, writing sentences, and spelling, and spelling, and spelling, and spelling is still my worst nightmare. Um, today, seven years and countless years later, Ron is back to traditional school. He has one low grade, a C minus in advanced placement history. But you know what? It's his favorite subject, despite it being the hardest for him. And other grades are great. He has B in biology, B in English honors, B in Spanish, A in math, and A in physical education. Ron can read two books in one day. There are no signs of dyslexia anymore. It's just a bad dream from first grade. But you know, 
this story of hard to teach and hard to learn runs in my DNA through generations. When I was a child, I failed exams, I skipped classes, and eventually I dropped out of school. I did have ADHD. We figured it out when I was 24, learning to drive. And the only way to make you guys safe on their own when I'm driving was to take those focus pills. ADHD is attention deficit disorder. I probably had dyslexia. I hated reading and writing, and it was hard for me, but we never bothered to check on that one. And what I had for sure was a severe form of teenage rebellion. And you know what? Today, I want to thank my parents. Because with all that, they knew I was smart. They loved me. They supported me. They accepted my choices and helped me follow them through. I am a director and a founder of a math school today. I teach math in my own school, in my own way. 400 kids and 25 teachers. I found my way. Yet, I still don't read and respond to all my emails in time. I forget things, I lose them, and here I am. I forget my words. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe. <laughs> um, I have 46 years of connecting the thoughts experience. As a kid, as a student, as a teacher, as a mother, as a founder of a school. And you know what? This experience tells me that Everything is possible. And to make it easier, I boiled down all these 46 years into just five principles. Just five dots to connect. It's an easy recipe. Mix and match, add your own spices, change amounts, make it fit your own taste. Please use it. The first principle is finding passion for our, in our kids. But how do you do it? Well, if you notice what our kids like and what they're good at, and put it together with what we think is important, we can teach anything using their own natural inclinations and talents. There we go. ADHD again. Probably wasn't important. <laughs> well, it was important, actually. Can I go back? I remember now. Um, remember how Ron wrote, I like Minecraft? Um, he did like Minecraft. He was good at telling stories in his own words. And it was important to learn to write. We found a coach who came up with writing rules for Minecraft. At first, she wrote those rules herself from Ron's words. Then he wrote a word inside, a two, a sentence, a paragraph, until he was writing it all. We were there making, helping him do what he didn't want to in small steps that he could do with an element of a joy until he was able to do it by himself. Today, Ron can become a writer if he wants to. You know, he writes my... Uh, yeah, he does write my emails too, but he is writing his own book. And it is amazing, right? Seven years ago, 
I could not have believed that this would happen. Second principle. Uh, second principle is to teach kids how to learn and make them independent. The way I think about it is how we teach them to eat. We can give them a spoon. No, wait. You can take a spoon and put them in their mouths, put it in their mouths. Or you can give them a spoon, offer food, and ask them to eat. Yes, at first, half the food will end up on the table, and the other half will fly onto the floor. But we do want them to become independent. We don't want them to be still fed by the spool when they are 30 or 46. And you know, teaching math is actually easier than parenting. Nothing to argue about. There's usually just one correct answer. And still, when my students don't know how to solve a problem, when they are stuck, I don't give them the solution right away. I don't solve it for them. I ask questions. I guide their thinking. I lead them to find a solution on their own. Third principle. I believe this is the foundation for teaching and learning. Third principle is love, trust, and respect. Of course, we all love our kids. It's a given. But what about trust and respect? Talking about it is easy, but making it happen? There's one story from when I was teaching that I want to tell you. It's when COVID hit, uh, we all had to go online, and it was terrible, no personal interactions. I missed my kids. And in one of my teenagers group, um, kids didn't want to put their cameras on, more than half of them. And when I asked them to turn cameras back, they ignored me. For me, teaching them and not seeing their faces, seeing just those black screens was close to painful. When I tried to tell them how I feel, only one of them said, Anna, but why does it bother you? We are here, we can hear you, we can talk, we can write. It is like talking on the phone. And at that moment, I decided to trust and respect that. Didn't really have a choice, but I did. We went on with the lesson. They participated. Some did turn their cameras on. The lesson went well. And you know, later, I did talk to the kids who didn't turn their cameras on. They had good reasons. One of the girls had a rash on her face and was embarrassed to show it on camera. As parents, I am sure we all have thousands of stories when having it our way doesn't work, or even worse, works in the opposite direction. What we can do is make decisions together with our kids and see them as capable and independent even before they fully are. We can offer choices, have conversations, and often we will learn something new from our kids and realize that having it our way is not always optimal or necessary. A short principle. <laughs> Refrain. <laughs> okay. But words matter. This is what it is about. And you know, positive words motivate. And negative, don't use them. And instead of saying, 
Don't do that. Say, do it in another way. Instead of saying, don't get distracted, say, please focus. And you know, we can reframe our kids' vision of themselves. When they say, I can't do this, we can say, well, not yet, but you will. Number five, who taught me to count? <laughs> I can teach. <laughs> so the last principle is making mistakes and letting kids struggle and fail. This is essential. Okay. Raise your hand if you have never, ever made a mistake. Hey, <laughs> put it down. I don't believe you. And yes. When kids are learning, they're facing, or when we are learning, we are facing something new and challenging. Struggle is natural. It is how we learn. Although making mistakes can be really bad, they can have consequences. But our kids need to learn that their mistakes do not mean they are bad. Making mistakes is how we build confidence. And last thing, our kids need to learn that we adults also make mistakes. When I make mistakes in class and my students find them, it's a celebration. They know better than I do. They see better than I do. And they gladly become my teachers. So here is the key lesson that I've learned. When I dropped out of school, I wanted to prove everyone wrong and prove myself right. I fought later for grades to receive a confirmation that I am smart. But today, I am making sure all my 402 kids know they are smart. And they know that what's really important is the progress and the passion to keep going. Mistakes are there to teach us if we master the skill or just if we still need to train it. And about Ron. Today, Ron is facing new challenges. He needs to get organized, manage time, make to-do lists, and go to college. Raise your hand if you are facing similar challenges today. Thank you. Well, Ron does want to go to college, and he does need for that to get good grades. And I am still worried. But I know he will learn, he will find his way, I know that because I know what to do. I have a recipe. It's not clicking. Okay. It is. Find passion. Teach how to learn. Love, trust, and respect. Reframe. Make mistakes. Keep loving and repeat. <laughs> because all the thoughts, all the efforts that we put as parents and teachers when we teach our kids are the dots that they will learn to connect. And when they do, the stars will align and they will light the path to their future. That's it.
Way. Thank you.